Welcome to The Hustle with Ben Anderson, highlighting a series of inspirational success stories with celebrities, entrepreneurs, athletes, and industry-leading professionals. Ben has learned and mastered the art of the hustle, which has allowed him to become a top 20 USA loan originator and the number one mortgage and real estate finance coach in America, who has closed more than $3 billion in real estate finance transactions. So sit back, listen, and learn with The Loan King about money and mortgage. Welcome to The Hustle with myself, your host Ben Anderson, coming from Manhattan on a hot Friday, We're having a great time, meeting great people, and today I welcome to the show a great friend, Iris Chen. Thank you so much, Ben, for having me. You know, it was just your energy walking in the room is a little bit special. Is it? It is. People um, do tell me that. You have bubbles. <laughs> so I want to go in there and talk mm-hmm. about what you're most uh, famously known for, which is being alongside Gary Vee yes. for many years. yes, yes. And uh, that's a special journey. We'll mm-hmm. dive into that. But of course. you have roots and you're real, and I like that. Mm-hmm. And you have to be real because you come from the Bay. <laughs> exactly. And those who don't you know the Bay, the Bay, you got up the Bay. Yeah. That's the Bay Area, Northern California. Yes. And so I want to talk about all the things you're doing, but mm-hmm. it's more important to me to open up your mindset yes. and to see why and how you're doing the things that you're doing. I love it. Because we could it. talk about that forever. Yeah, I know. So let's, let's uh, get down to it. You know, um, talk about where you're from. Uh, talk about, you know, how you, how you were raised and, and your background a little bit. With us for sure, that. for sure. So, hey, guys. Um, I am from the Bay Area. What? Um, the, the Bay, That's exactly, right. from Fremont, California. Grew up there. Um, I was really involved in sports, and sports actually helped uh, essentially challenged my mentality when I was growing up because I was when I grew up I was essentially a very shy kid and I would get bullied like by teachers really? and like my friends because I was shy and I wasn't good in school so like that was like my first adversity growing up was because I was always made fun of or because like people would talk down on me so that actually like like you know how like Gary always says that he goes into his mindset like yes. that was my first time when I was little of going into my own head. Let's and just, go in there. Tell me, give me an example of one thing that someone that you still remember, because obviously I see, yeah, I see yeah. there's a chip there. Yeah, so, uh, well, one of the, like, most, uh, I would say impactful experiences when I was, like, in second grade, I would say, is when the teacher essentially had me talk and read, and I was still super young and I was just reading right but since I'm like super shy and I wasn't outspoken back then the teacher essentially called me out um, and I had to like go outside and all the kids were essentially laughing at me and like that really like stuck with me and after that I was like all right I'm just going to go within myself it's it's not anything that I would put against them but it's something that I have to work on myself so ever since then I just went super like inwards and like focused on me and like growing me and that was like my first adversity in so a that, way. that could go two ways though that could go towards like deep depression mm-hmm. and self-doubt or that can go towards owning it and looking at you and saying you could blame the kids and say these kids these kids or you could say me 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 i'm yeah. not that's never happened and again. i found my confidence in sports and so i did every sport and I found my confidence there because I was good at it um, and I did martial arts for 10 years, became a black belt, nice. uh, continued to that until college. Uh, but I, where I really formed my mindset in terms of hustle and understanding that if you put your mind to something, anything can happen was when I went to UC Irvine and when I was at UC Irvine, I realized I didn't want to stay there because I wanted to try something else. So when you go to college, you're like figuring out what you want to do in life, right? Absolutely. No no one really tells you when you're in high school, or at least from my experience, everything was about grades. I come from a very Asian community, so grades was your standard of success. Sure, absolutely. So in terms of me trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life, it was only when I went to my first year of college, I was like, all right, now i got to figure this out. And then I was thinking, all right, what do I like doing? What is something that I could see myself becoming? And that was becoming a broadcaster, for example, for ESPN. That was like my dream. Wait a minute. Someone that couldn't even speak I know. wanted to become a broadcaster? It's that crazy. is so far off. I actually think that, so I actually think that people, for example, um, Jim, do you know Jim Quick? He's uh-huh. a brain coach. So he started out with a broken brain and now he's a brain coach. Wow. I believe that a lot of people who are fulfilling their purpose in life are doing the things that they 
when they were younger in some way weren't able to do or were there was uh they want to help the younger them you that's, know what i mean like i want to help the younger me you know so yes, that is actually <laughs> very on point right so um back to the story uh when i was at uc irvine figuring out what i wanted to do i saw broadcast journalism i was like i want to do that i want to become like a broadcaster for espn because when i went to the laker game i was like that's really cool and i want to try that out so i looked up uh just google searched uh, the top broadcaster journalism schools in the United States and the number one was USC and another one in the East Coast. I didn't even, I don't remember what it was because I didn't apply to it. I was like I want to stay in LA and I want to this is the only college that I'm going to apply to for broadcast journalism or I'm dropping out. So really that hard? Yeah like I was like that serious. I was serious like I didn't apply to any other school. I wasn't going to go back to UC Irvine. All the chips on the table. All the chips on the table. You just, you, I know in the book, Think and Grow Rich, they're like, you have to cut off everything behind you to pursue your plan A. You know what I mean? That's right. Yeah, so uh, when I, that one year, most kids are partying in college your first year. I was studying and I was in my room just grinding and hustling and trying to, I was a good student, right? So in that first year, it was my mindset. Like I was so on top of things because I had a goal that I wanted to achieve and I worked every ounce of my effort to achieve it. And then that summer I got in. So from that point, uh, I just realized when you put your mind to something, cause this is something that I didn't, like I wasn't, um, no one told me about this until I experienced it myself. I didn't read any books before this. It was something that I experienced and then Afterwards, I looked into more self-development, personal growth, and that's kind of like where I learned like, oh, other people do this. It's not just me. So you learn the whole mindset makeover Mm -hmm. through experience, which is the best teacher. It is. Experience is the best teacher. Um, So then when I went to USC in broadcast journalism, I actually dropped out of that major my first week there because... Let me just get this right. It was digital journalism. And I, during that time, I found social media. So it was, I'm not sure what they're teaching right now. Um, I'm sure it's more social media, digital media. But back when I was there, it was still more of the traditional route. But I saw social media coming up. So I decided I'm going to scrap that, get an education in biology, actually because I wanted to teach, I wanted to learn about it myself, like nutrition and fitness, that's something of my background and uh, something I wanted to carry on with me for the rest of my life. So that was more of an education for me and I decided to learn about social media because I saw people online such as Michelle Fawn, um, Cassie Ho, who built a brand on YouTube and created a whole empire out of it. So that's when I really became involved with uh, the whole social media world. And I just started learning, started creating videos online, built a little bit of brand for myself. Um, And then... So let's go back a second. The videos. So what was the first, what was your first couple steps that you did? If someone's out there wanting to start into Mm -hmm. um, the social media posting game. Yeah. You know, where did you start? I just started. I literally just put a took a camera that I always had, put it on like shoe boxes, and just started filming. Just find one thing that you're passionate about. Were you talking about a certain topic? I was talking about healthy cooking, so healthy cooking in the dorms. Because you found that passion yeah. in your own life because you wanted to be healthy. Yes, exactly. So you took the passion and said, what the hell, I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I know how to talk about it. Yes. Why not just share healthy drone cooking? Exactly. And in the beginning, you're going to suck, but you just have to start because like now, like if you never start, you will never evolve. You will never grow. So even if the people who are starting right now who want to grow a personal brand, just start and in the, in the way, like in the process, you'll figure it out. You'll figure out how to talk to the camera. You'll figure out the different hacks on how to grow on social media, the different platforms that you should be using and optimizing, like that'll all come. But the number one thing is to just figure out what you want to talk about and begin. And just go and yeah. probably talk about what you love and what you're passionate about, so yeah. it's easy. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, so let's keep going. Mm-hmm. But you were passionate about fitness and, 
and nutrition yes. and healthy living mm-hmm. and and you're living in a dorm so yeah. it makes sense that how do you live healthy healthy in a dorm yeah so. like simple recipes for other college students who are going through the same thing so I found like a niche there um, and then I got really I fell in love with like the whole branding aspect of things so understanding business I, I fell in love with business B- branding and business right um, so in college I was doing that um, and after college, I was studying biology, so usually people who are studying bio go to med school, right? But that was never my intention. So every time someone asks me, like, oh, you're going to med school? Like, where are you going after? I'm like, no, nah, like, I'm doing YouTube. Like, that was the thing that I was saying, and I, I was, like, confident in it. I was like, yo, like, I can, I see people doing that. I can do that. You knew. Like, I, yeah. Like, some people probably would have been embarrassed to say that, and obviously YouTube mm-hmm. is the mega platform, but... There's a certain type of expectation on someone that graduates from USC with a biology degree. <laughs> exactly. And that expectation is just to be real, it's not YouTube. Yeah. That is, you're going to go be a doctor. Yeah. Or something in the medical field. Exactly. But you're like, I know me, mm-hmm. I know my roots, I know what I'm going to be good at, and it's going to be YouTube. Yeah, exactly. So, and coming from an Asian background, like, that's not the thing to do, you know what I mean? But I saw the potential of social media, I saw what people can do, and I knew from my mindset from back to my first year of college that... If I put my mind to something, I could do anything. Business. Yeah. So, and so throughout college, um, that was my mindset. And then, I'm just going into my whole story. I love it. Uh, I'm, I'm just my, on the edge of my seat. It's, it's pretty intense. My last semester of college, my mom got sick. So oh, wow. then that threw me off of like, I can't do anything. Like, I'm not going to put myself out there because I want to go back home to take care of my mom. Yeah. So I just essentially, that plan just got cut for a bit. Um, And then- Went back home to the Bay? I went back home to the Bay, and in the process of me, like being with my mom, it was really challenging, I found Gary. So Gary's videos really helped me in terms of my mindset. So you were consuming his content? Yeah, so that- his mindset. So Gary, Gary V's content helped me get through that really difficult time. and so once my mom got a little bit better, uh, there was an opportunity. Um, he put out a video where they were looking for people to help them make videos. And I was like, I'm still learning about myself. I'm okay with putting my dream on hold because this guy has really helped me and I want to help him. So I made a video for him, a 60 second video. So what, what mm-hmm. was his pitch? Make me a video and see how good it is. It was just or like making just any video. It was okay. it's kind of crazy. I believe in things so, happen for a reason yeah. and intuition. Before I even watched the video, it was a 30 minute vlog. I was like, there's something waiting before I watch this video. There's something waiting for so me at the end of this. It wasn't like obvious. From it wasn't like a note. Stay to the end, and there's a. Sur- no, it was a video, and then my own intuition because I go by intuition a lot. My intuition before I watched the video was telling me there's something at the end of this video no waiting way. for you. Yeah. And then I looked at the end of the video and it was, he was asking for video help, video editors, videographers. And I was like, this is something that I know that I have to do. So then I made a video, did it in like one day, sent it to him, tweeted it to, it to him. Nothing what, happened. What was the video you made? Uh, it was a video, I think it was talking about passion. So it was passion, like a 60 second video chop, chopping up content from his YouTube channel. So I downloaded and shipped his content and then I created a motivational 60 second video and tweeted it to him. So essentially to anyone who wants to like find a job for Gary, like just to give you guys some value, look at what he's currently doing right now on his social media platforms and see what you can do better and but also like see what he's doing and try to follow that. Like if you can make that, that's just the people that they're looking for to help him grow his content. So what you're saying is if you add value, you can exactly move up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what they're doing right now, it's it's literally your whole, uh, the guide is on social media. Just look at what they're doing and see if you can help replicate it and make it better. I love it. Yeah, so essentially I tweeted it to him no, no reply, response. no reply. Um, but then one Saturday morning, a week later, I wake up to a bunch of tweets from him. Uh, oh, sorry, his community 
saying this is really good and then he saw it because they saw it and it created like a little virality there um and then he told me to reach out to him and then i emailed them and turns out i was living in california back then turns out they were looking up uh, sorry like two weeks later i was coming to new york because i had a trip planned to visit my friend here so then we met up and went well and then moved to new york city three weeks later to work for that's great. Yeah, yeah. And that lasted about a year and a half or two Yeah, years? a year and a half, yeah. So, so what was that experience like working on his team? Yeah, so working for Gary, I started as a resident, so it's similar to an intern that, a fancy name for an intern, but essentially it's graduated college. So I started out just editing videos for his different platforms, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social media platforms. Um, and then quickly moved up to becoming his videographer. So essentially you were following his personal him. videographer, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was me. There's another guy, D Rock, and Babin. Um, and there's a lot of people on the team. Just so you guys are aware, um, there's about maybe 12 people on the team back then. I know there's about 30 now. Um, so there's a ton of people just working on his personal brand. So when I started there, I would say his Instagram was at one million, and then when I left, it was around four million on Instagram awesome. yeah so growing his social media is learning a lot and if you want to know like the insight about working there uh, definitely hustle you're always motivated because everyone else is like you know the energy like being in New York City you feel the energy right so you get that osmosis uh, through just being in that environment um, and obviously going with him to all these different meetings I was a fly on the wall so I got to essentially listen and just learn what is it like to be like in business or what is it like to grow a brand and him as a person is amazing like he's so genuine and he's always there for you like even when um i was dealing with personal problems he would always be uh there for me so all my respect goes out to him um and growing a brand that's what i learned yeah. so i want us all because one thing that we're doing with a lot of mm -hmm. those who are listening mm -hmm. is a lot of our audience is in the real estate industry. Yes. And there's between licensed loaner officers and licensed realtors, it's almost 3 million people okay. uh, that we reach out to with it, with this podcast mm -hmm. that, uh, that should hear this message. Yes. And one thing that is troubling in real estate right now, um, let me break it down for you and then I want you to break it back down for me. Sure. Because this will be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. So right now, what's happening in real estate is a lot of these fintech companies are trying to automate the salesperson out of the industry. Mm, you okay. have Zillow, yes, who is they're looking, trying to take out the agent exactly mm -hmm. because they're saying, well, we can selling house isn't that hard. Just put it online yourself. Why pay six percent to a listing service when you can pay one percent to an mm -hmm. online listing service? Or there's all these online lending platforms yeah. where you can go do your own loan. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these, the average age of the average realtor is fifty nine. And the loan officer is 56. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of a disconnect with technology and building a brand. Yeah. So we try so hard to be that group that actually speaks on behalf of an advocate for these loan officers and realtors to build their brand mm -hmm. because most don't have a brand. Yeah. So our company does personal branding for loan officers and for realtors. Which is incredible. And because they don't do Smart. it for themselves. And the busy salesperson mm -hmm. is so wrapped up in their busy selling and showing properties but they'll never do it, and yeah. they don't have the tools to hire a team mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like the Gary Vee does. Yeah. So we actually do all their posting for them. Got it. So I want That's you smart. to re-break re it down in reverse, and if you're talking to the real estate agents, the loan officers, or even solo entrepreneurs who don't know how to build a brand because they think they've, they can't get in touch with that Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, mm -hmm, YouTube, mm -hmm. teach us now okay. how to build a brand. Amazing. Well, first off, I would say it's very smart for you to be doing this and for telling all these real estate agents to grow a brand because essentially, even though technology and stuff is going to affect the industry, you want to stand out or you'll get essentially taken over by it. So by you building a personal brand, you're putting yourself in the game because if you're not in it, you're not in the game. And unless you're uh, one percent of people who's just known in general, but in terms of growing a brand, like as a real estate agent, 
you have to create content, not just about the property, but also about yourself. Because people want to trust you. Building brand is all about trust and reputation. And so you have to show up every day on social media because that's where the attention is right now. So you have to build yourself online because if you're not online, you're not really seen. You know what I mean? So you just got to put out content. Do you want me to go into the tactics on like yeah, how to like do that? Basically, this is your floor. I want you to teach us. You're the... You're an, an extreme high-level expert yeah. that can add, a ma I mean, you can make a massive impact on people that need this because I'm telling you, like, the state of the mind of realtors and loan officers is they're going out of business. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just explain another story. So right now you have these companies call like, Open Door, okay. where they are telling you they'll buy your home directly from you. Mm. So buyers, sellers are going online and submitting in the information and the companies are just buying homes without an agent. Got it. So let me let me ask you this. When an uh, agent is selling a home, what is the process like? Great. So I can be more strategic in telling them how to create content. Great that question. Would so most it. agents uh, get referrals. Mm -hmm. People call them to go, uh, or let's say an agent's working, let's say traditionally, an agent works a farm. Mm -hmm. They work like, say, a neighborhood or a city. Yes. And they pass out flyers and they talk to people and their job is to get listings mm -hmm. from people in a neighborhood. So if I was, if this building was my farm, I would knock on every door and say, hey, looking to buy or sell on me, I'm yeah, a realtor. Yeah, got it, got and it. And then they would get a listing and they put the property online, mm -hmm. but agents aren't getting many buyers anymore because buyers are going online and going right to, to the directly listing. Directly to the listing, got so. it, okay. So what I would say is, you gotta put out content about yourself, your neighborhood, and the properties that you were selling. You could literally, it's obviously best to have like someone filming you, someone helping you. But you can obviously just take out your phone and just start showing the process of you selling that home and what it takes to do so. So building brand around you, number one, building, um, pr producing content in the locations that you're in. So whether that's down the street at the cafe or you know talking about real estate or just build creating content around the location and the real estate that you're selling in order to create trust and to get your name out there. Um, and then it's like the whole using the right hacks for social media. So talk so like, about that. So the, the first piece of what you're saying is putting I'm, content. I'm Debbie the, 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 the realtor. Mm -hmm. I'm working in, in this certain area. Yeah. You're saying when I go to a restaurant, um, talk about the restaurant and real estate. Talk so that's more of just you getting yourself out there in the location that you're in. So people who go to that restaurant are obviously going to trust you because they know that you're there too. So it builds like a, like a connection, you know what I mean? When so you're saying when, when I'm on at a restaurant and I'm saying, hey, just having lunch at you know, Debbie's Diner, mm -hmm. uh, having a great day selling real estate. When someone also likes Debbie's Diner and yes. knows that I'm a realtor, they're like, oh, see I see her there. She likes the same restaurant I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I now have a little trust in her. Then when they see me at the coffee shop, oh, I like the coffee shop too. Exactly. I trust her. Mm -hmm. She seems to have a common interest with me. Mm -hmm. Let's exactly. Relate. And you like to work with people that you like and also that you have connection with too. So that helps you in terms of business, but also just in relationship building. Um, and then obviously you have to show your expertise as to like what you're selling, the properties that you have available, and like they'll come to you because you have a brand online over someone who is super random that you don't even know at all. So you, by you just like going to the coffee shop or the restaurant, it builds a connection there and it's like the magic that's not like seen in a way. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That's great advice. Yeah, yeah. So um, besides that, Instagram, um, there's so many features online. Social media is there's a lot going on, so I totally understand for you know the agents who are a little bit out of the game. It it may seem hard, but you learn in the process. You're not. It's gonna seem like intimidating in the beginning, but once you start going with it, like it's better to start than to not even do anything at all. So for example, for Instagram, there's videos, there's pictures, there's Instagram stories, there's IGTV. So those are the four different like functions of Instagram. Um, so you literally should post pictures of where you're at, video content, put it out. Um, make sure to put the location tag, hashtag real estate in your area. Um, 
do all of the things because real estate is more of a location based business and so you have to be more location centric um, and then once you learn like Facebook ads you can target the audience that you're looking to reach um, and so yeah like you just you so just have to start great content be consistent great content be consistent understand social media but in understanding that you understand through the process of it um, and then even like collaborations with people in your area who maybe have a reputation but aren't posting but because you interview them that will help build your reputation because right. that will help bring a connection be like oh you're associated with this person then people are gonna trust you even more so like maybe there's a the mayor who doesn't have a social media presence, but everyone knows he's the mayor. If you interview him, that'll help you gain a ton of business because that's your biggest uh, leader in your area. Yeah, I, you know. I teach these loan officers a program called Local Loan Guru, mm -hmm. and it's about getting in their local neighborhood, and I mm -hmm. use the mayor as an example. Mm -hmm. And I say, just go interview them, and you post that, and your credibility just went yeah. through the roof yeah. because you're you're filming someone that other people trust mm -hmm. and then therefore they're going to trust you. Yeah, and also the last point I want to say is also uh, be yourself in it. Be yourself because that's, that's what people are attracted to. They're attracted to authenticity. And in real estate, it's all about relationships, right? So you want to be genuine in your relationships and that will help you in business I love and that. life. Yeah. That's great advice. So yeah. everyone who heard that, uh, rewind that, play it back mm -hmm. because that's a very good playbook. Yeah. And thanks for sharing from your experience. Of course, of course. So let's talk about like the mindset overall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's the overall mindset that you learned uh, from working on Gary Vee's team? Yeah. And how did that take you to the next level in your career? And how did you leave? Yeah, I know. Um, so mindset, what I learned from Gary is a lot of things. I would say kindness out of all things. Um, stay on the offense. Don't dwell on your mistakes or things that have happened in the past. Um, speed. Speed trumps a lot of things. Um, and yeah, just uh, the hustle mentality is definitely there. He works more than anyone I've ever seen work. Um, and yeah, the days I would film him from 8 to 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. sometimes. So dinner meetings in the uh, Breakfast meetings in the morning, goes to the office, does his, you know, events throughout the day, and then at night there'd be dinner meetings and we would film all of it. Because um, essentially for his brand, we were documenting. So he lives an interesting life where he's not just entertaining, but he provides a lot of value. So when, for example, when you're in a business meeting, you're talking about brand, you're talking about how to build a business, we capture all that and we essentially cut it all down to social media. So for the like the real estate agents, for example, if you have someone, the ideal situation, you have someone that's always with you filming because then you can turn that into a 10 to 15 minute vlog on YouTube or Facebook and then you would cut the specific moments during the day um, and create it for micro content. Micro content is the stuff that goes on Instagram and Facebook because that's where people's attentions are when they don't have too much time to look at a full YouTube video. So the micro content on social media is actually way more um, impactful than it the vlog is. The vlog is more of a show. The micro content is the stuff that gets from what we know um, and what we've experienced is gets a lot of exposure. And so that's it's quick and fast because people's attention spans right now are very short. And that's, that's really the space we're hoping to fill and why mm -hmm. I wanted you to mm -hmm. come meet with me because with the agents who are older, yeah. you know, we've become their media partner. Yeah. And we're like, just record it and give us the footage. Yeah. And we'll cut it for you. We'll exactly. edit it for you. We'll put it on there for you. We'll like, we'll call mm -hmm. it. We'll engage mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. so, exactly. So uh, give my team some advice because we trust your uh, opinion and reputation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of so course. So we're doing that for agents. Okay. And for loan officers. Mm -hmm as their media partner. Mm -hmm. So as, you know, I know you guys did it for Gary, but now think a bigger scale if you had to do that for lots of other Garys, mm -hmm. because Gary couldn't, didn't have the means to do it for himself. Yeah, yeah. What advice would you give a company who's doing it in a macro level, mm -hmm. but making it a micro experience? Yeah, exactly. So 
essentially you want to record let's say you have a 30 minute video and there's a lot of value in between certain segments there's like one minute pieces which are just like gold mines you know then essentially what you do is you would chop it up in that one 60 second video you would format it correctly for instagram facebook twitter linkedin formatting is essentially making it making it square just giving it like the nitty gritties um, Essentially what we do is we add captions when someone is talking because that helps. A lot of people are watching their content, their phones, and they're not listening. They're just looking because they're busy, they're on the car, they're on the train. Like That's why we have captions in a lot of the content. Um, and then essentially the title. The title is a way to grab your attention. It's like a headliner. Um, uh, essentially to grab your attention we call them like thumb stoppers of like oh like this looks interesting because people are scrolling so fast you have to have like something that gains their attention um and then we we a lot of the times i'm not saying that everyone should be following the same format because it really depends on someone's ambition because it is a personal brand but we do a lot of meme stuff on gary's content is because people are very comfortable with meme style stuff even though it looks ugly, like it's a way to grab people's attention, so and that's explain, all he cares explain about. Explain to some here what a meme is. Uh, so a meme is essentially it's like a cultural phenomenon in the more <laughs> millennial world, I guess. Um, that it's like a funny like gesture, or um, I would say, like I don't really know how to explain it. It's more of a visual thing. Um, that essentially a lot of funny things or a lot of cultural references are created on a meme template. Um, a meme is essentially white with like Helvetica text. So it's yeah. just a, a type of framing with writing on it. Yeah, and well, I think the meme was is actually a vocabulary word that was created a long time ago, but I can't remember what exactly the definition of that was. Well, you stole it and used it very well. So good <laughs> Okay, good. So roll me through. Um, you had a great year and a half. Obviously learned a ton that mm. you have applied to your own personal brand and business. So uh, what was it like leaving the team and what did you do next? Yeah, so I was actually going to leave the team six months in, um, and then I just decided to stay. Um, the thing is, I've always had my own ambition, and I've always wanted to try my own thing. So it was more of a, I didn't want to like become, a, like there was no one in the team that I really wanted to become. And like the next level, there was nothing really that I felt like um, was next for me within the company because just of my personal ambitions. Because you're already doing that top job yeah yeah and and you know I felt like I gave my value to him and I wanted to help him but remember how I always had my own ambitions always. I I never wanted to let that go and so that was a little bit um, affecting me second grade roots yeah it was a little bit affecting me and I'm like I've always wanted to try something else so you know sometimes you just have to cut things Follow off in order to you have to let things go in order to like move on and fly to and the next thing grow rich right exactly, exactly so what was your fly zone from there yeah so uh after i left i was you know figuring out okay i i'm curious as to whether i want to focus just on my personal brand or i want to try the whole business aspect of things um one of the things that uh stuck like, okay, I will, like, besides the whole brand thing, a lot of things personally have ha had happened in my life, like my mom passed, and that essentially had me leave. Um, so that was more of a thing that happened uh, unexpectedly, so then I uh, had to leave and obviously left the job because I wanted to be with my mom. Um, and then I was just figuring out what I wanted to do. I'm good at editing videos. So I started out just helping other people edit their video content, and then it grew into me helping people with their personal branding. 
Um, and so I have my own agency I love that. helping people with their personal brands, entrepreneurs, um, and now uh, getting into helping with different brands. That's really cool. Yeah, and having my YouTube vlog and also an interview show interviewing a lot of people, talking about their story, how they're using social media to build their presence online, and how that's helping them in their business and in their lives. So you took all of the entrepreneurial things that Gary V talks about mm -hmm. with the desire you had to be in broadcasting on ESPN <laughs> and just became your own broadcaster. Exactly. So I kind of like took everything <laughs> that I learned and that I wanted to do and just like put it together and now I'm essentially doing it. So I it's, love it. it's been a crazy journey just the past like three years, um, but I'm so grateful for all of it, the ups and the downs. And I will say the mindset is like the number one thing that anyone can sh like be implementing in their lives um, in order to go to the next level. So you're following your heart, you're following your passion. Yeah. So as you see this unfolding, you're, you think things through pretty thoroughly. Yeah. Uh, what is it going to be like going forward? You going know, what, forward? What is your company going to become? So um, I actually have never said this before. Um, yes. So you guys got a little sneak peek that uh, a lot of people can hear. Um, so my, my whole brand is called Iris Rosen Co. So that's the brand I created back when I started my YouTube channel. And I essentially want to create Iris Rosen Co. into like the, the main like holding company, for example, that has all the different filters like the agency, uh, media company, uh, product business, and everything Love fall it. under that. Um, so that's essentially what I'm doing. Um, on the more business side of things, I have my blog, so I just hired a full-time videographer that's going to be helping me pump out weekly vlogs um, and then which is documenting like my life building my personal brand so a lot of you guys like I am also doing it so I love <laughs> you it. guys I, I think that's the most important thing yeah. I heard you say is you're doing what you're having other people do exactly and that makes you way more credible mm -hmm. way exactly. more credible because exactly. you're building your brand and you're saying look don't do as I say do as I do yeah exactly and I will say that the whole Iris Rosen Co concept is essentially the message is essentially to be courageous and follow your like your dream and follow your intuition follow your heart so I always wanted to put that message out there like I always wanted to share that but I didn't want to just share it without doing it. So by me doing it, it is sharing it and it is helping to grow. Essentially, I want Iris Rose to be bigger than myself because I want to share that message that other people can do it too from the second grade me to like where I become. Yeah, I think yeah. that's called legacy. <laughs> exactly, you know, exactly. And to bring a full circle, it's exactly. just called legacy. So it's kind of evolving and happening and I'm excited to see where I can take it. Um, but definitely like, whatever I put my mind to, like, I know I can get there because of the mindset. So. Well, I'll tell you, I'm proud of your story because Thank it you. is such a good one and <laughs> you're just doing the honorable thing by practicing what you preach. Exactly. And so give us a nugget, give us a takeaway. I feel like we're getting this conversation going uh, before you just explode. So before <laughs> you're too busy for us down the road someday. One uh, little nugget. Give us a nugget. Um, I would say there's a lot of nuggets that I want to, to say. Um, it can be anything from um, passion, motivation, inspiration. I would say it's less about passion, to, to be honest. Um, it's more of the mentality to deflect the noise around you and focus on your goal like focus on that one thing and just like like tune everything else out everything else yeah like don't fear starting don't fear starting because if i was fearing if i was still that second year old second grade me and i feared a lot of things i would not be where i am today and so a lot of the times adversity helps to get you into that mindset and gives you perspective on a lot of things. Um, but stay within your own head and just like go for it. Like even if you fail, like as at least you tried. A lot it's of people don't, terms. a lot of people, yeah, exactly. A lot of people don't try at all. And like life is to be lived. You got one life. I, I, there's 
just like a couple days ago, uh, one of my friends from high school just passed out of nowhere. And we're like, I'm 24, you know what I mean? Like, right. you, you, and like dealing with my mom and like, you got one life to live, you better maximize and squeeze what you got. And like, the, like maximize on the potential that you have. Like, just go for it. That's what I would say. That's called just yeah. living your life the way that it was supposed to be lived. You give someone something, you want them to use it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the life we're given, we have to maximize it. And um, I see so much potential in you. I can't mm -hmm. wait to have us connect and uh, and be fast friends and, yeah. and, and, and and somehow, some way, continue to work together. Yeah. Because your story is inspiring. Um, Thank you. My takeaways are very clear. Uh, just focus right in on what you want. Yeah. And don't stop until you've run through it. Exactly. Just, just, just go and grind. try. Why not? Yeah. One life to live. One life. Um, a guest we had on before mm -hmm. had said something very important. He says, um, you only die once, but you live every single day. Mm, so as that. opposed to people saying you only live once, no. You can live a million lives until you figure out what you want. Mm -hmm. You only die once. Wow. So I thought that yeah. was pretty important. And, and every day that. you have a new opportunity. You have a new opportunity to try. You have the world is literally your oyster the internet has allowed you to do so many things so many opportunities are coming up you can start your business you can do real estate you can grow your brand who knows what it will lead to you like put yourself out there because you have the opportunity to like grow and like maximize your potential and anyone can do it now anyone can do it well one thing i know is you're doing it you're hustling and you actually have the hustle so <laughs> Thank thanks you. for joining us we appreciate your time and I can't see you again soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ben. You're welcome. To follow our story, check us out at benanderson.365 on Instagram and stay tuned for our next honored guest.